Greetings, you dreadlight monstrosities. I hope you're doing well. My name is Graham, and this is the Crack a Pack here on LRRMTG. Please subscribe to our channel if you so desire. Today, we are opening a collector booster of Crimson Vow, which was given to us by Lee at Magicon Vegas 2023. And I actually don't think I've ever opened a collector booster of Crimson Vow specifically. Maybe I did at the PPR, but if I did, I don't remember it. So, let's explore. All cards are foil unless otherwise noted. Griff Rider is first. Two and a white for a 2-1 human knight with flying and training. Which is to say, whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. It's like the opposite of Mentor. It's the training is the creature saying, help, I'm just a little guy. And then you give it a bigger guy and then they attack together and the little guy goes, I've learned so much, like how to be slightly stronger. I like Griff Rider. Honored Heirloom, Manolith with set mechanic. Uh, well, no, Manolith with set synergy. Maybe maybe we'll, we'll go with that. Three mana for an artifact, tap to add one mana of any color. That's a manolith, but also for two and tap exile target card from a graveyard. Sometimes relevant in this format. A set on Innistrad interacting with the graveyard, surely not. Skywarp Scob. That's how you pronounce that, right? Three blue blue for a two five flying zombie drake. When Skywarp Scob enters the battlefield, you may exile two creature cards from your graveyard. If you do, draw a card. I didn't mind having a Skywarp Scob as like a slightly sort of mid to late game big blocker slash card advantage thing. It was fine. Now Gam Gam on the other hand, we got Kindly Ancestor. Two and a white for a two three spirit with lifelink and disturb for one and a white, which is to say you may cast this card from your graveyard transformed for its disturb cost. So Granny shows up, Ghost of Granny, and then if you kill the ghost, We're not gonna worry too much about that. You can cast her, cast the goat. You can reanimate the ghost as a shawl? Yeah, anyway, it's called Ancestor's Embrace. It's an aura. The enchanted creature has lifelink, and if you would put it anywhere, you exile it instead. I do like how Kindly Ancestor says, you look cold, dearie, and she's literally knitting a shawl, and then it's like, here you go. Love Kindly Ancestor. Lunar Rejection. This is, um, Th three, four, four, five, Lycanthrope Moon. I think that's what's happening in the art here. It's a seri It's someone through the entire process of turning into a were werewolf, just howl at own moon, uh, really unhappy about it. It's one in a blue to return target wolf or werewolf to its owner's hand and draw a card. But wait, there's less. If you cast it for its cleave cost, you can remove the words in square brackets. Yes, this is kind of clunky. I like when they play mechanically with the words in the rule box. I think that's interesting. So in this case, cleave is, like I said, three and a blue, meaning you change the text of the card to return target creature to its owner's hand. So yeah, love Lunar Rejection. Skull Scob, blue and black for a 2-2 zombie with exploit. Remember exploit? I do, it's neat. When this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. So in this case, it's just, you can do that. And then the text is, whenever a creature you control exploits a non-token creature, create a 2-2 black zombie. So that counts for any other creatures that might also exploit, but also it counts if you do it on this one. So, love Skull Cobb. We have our basic land. It's one of the full art black and white planes, looking very cool. I like these cards a lot and we can't use them on stream <laughs> because uh, on camera they all look like swamps, <laughs> which sucks, but here we are. More transform cards. We've got Edgar Charmed Groom, two white black for a 4-4 vampire noble. Other vampires you control get plus one plus one and when Edgar Charmed Groom dies, return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control as his coffin. He dead. But he's a vampire, so not for long. I just love that it's like, haha, you've defeated me. Now I will turn into me, but dead. It's legendary artifact, Edgar Markov's coffin. At the beginning of your upkeep, you make a vampire with lifelink. 
and you put a bloodline counter on Edgar Markov's coffin. Then, if there are three or more bloodline counters, remove those counters and transform it back into Edgar, who wakes up and makes all the vampires bigger. Cool. We've got one of the commander cards, Glass Cast Heart. This isn't foil, but it is extended art. Two and a black for an artifact. Whenever one or more vampires you control attack, create a blood token. For a black and tap and pay a life, you make a 1-1 one, one vampire with lifelink. And for black, black and tap and sacrifice it and 13 blood tokens, each opponent loses 13 life and you gain 13 life. Nice. Good stuff. We have a non-foil extended art hopeful initiate. Single white mana for a 1-2 human warlock with just a little guy. And two and a white, remove two plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control, destroy target artifact or enchantment. We have a showcase frame, Innocent Traveler, with the sort of filigree vampire look on the border. Two black black for a 1-3 human. At the beginning of your upkeep, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If no one does, transform Innocent Traveler into a malicious invader, a 3-3 three, three vampire with flying, and it gets plus two plus oh as long as an opponent controls a human. I simply would not have let them inside. We've got, oh, this is one of the Dracula cards. We've got a mysterious blood illness or vampire's vengeance. It's two and a red for an instant and it deals two damage to each non-vampire creature and you make a blood token. But in Bram Stoker world, it's a mysterious blood illness. Next, we have the high contrast black and white art on Dorothea, Vengeful Victim. White and a blue for a 4-4 legendary spirit with flying. Whenever Dorothea attacks or blocks, sacrifice it at the end of combat. And she has Disturb for one white and blue. And if you disturb Dorothea, she turns into Dorothea's Retribution, a creature enchantment that reads, the enchanted creature has, whenever this creature attacks, create a 4-4 white spirit creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking, sacrifice that token at the end of combat, and if this will be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So it turns any creature into a Geist of St. Traft. Heck. Penultimately, we have a foil filigree showcase frame, Gluttonous Guest. Two in a black for a 1-4 vampire. When it enters the battlefield, make a blood token. Whenever you sack a blood token, you gain one life. Combos hilariously with that glass cast heart. And finally, the Investigator's Journal, foil and extended art. Two mana artifact clue. It enters the battlefield with a number of suspect counters on it, equal to the greatest number of creatures a player controls. None of you are above reproach. For two and tap and remove a suspect counter from Investigator's Journal, draw a card. And for two and not tap, but sacrifice the journal, draw a card. So for four mana, you could do both of those. You could tap it, remove your last suspect counter, you've run through all your options, and then you just hurl the journal away and you're like, all right, now I've got more, more leads to go on. I'm not sure exactly what the flavor is meant to be there, but hey, good stuff. And our double face token is a zombie zombie. Two different flavors. 2-2 two, two black zombie and star star blue zombie. Neat. Love that. After all that, as collector boosters go, it's not, like, amazing. Uh, the, the whole thing's worth $8.20, which sounds, you know, maybe, like, fine. But over half of that is this wide hopeful initiate, which I would not have, not have picked. Um... I often like to imagine the, the world where we're drafting collector boosters, and I think I would probably take Edgar, because Edgar's just very powerful, but there's a lot of really cool stuff here. So, I don't know. You can, <laughs> if you wanna see some real analysis paralysis, try deciding what you would first pick out of a collector booster. It's wild. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Crack Pack. Until next time, I have been Graham with this pack from Lee Wright that was given to us at Magicon Vegas. If you want to give us a pack, you can do that in person if you see us somewhere, or you can send it through the mail to the address on your screen. Everything we do here at Loading Ready Run is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. Until next time, I think I mentioned that I've been Graham, but I'm going to say it again. I've been Graham. James has been running Tech. Matt edits these. Heather gets them online. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time.